This is Nergal from Behemoth, from Danzig, uh, you're listening to What's Metal. Okay, uh, first question. Uh, you just came fr uh, from stage, and when I'm right, uh, you haven't played any song of Grom, is that right? Yeah. Why? Well, you know, it didn't fit to the new uh, set that we play, right? The new songs, you know, are like much more structured, much more complex, and the song uh, and the, the tracks from Grom were like, more or less uh, primitive, you know, and uh, also like lyrically, you know, it yeah, it just doesn't speak for our like present phase or I I don't know how to call this, you know. But uh, other thing that is is that we are like limited by time on stage, you know, we just can't play like for 50 or 60 minutes, you know, we have like 35, 40 at last, you know. And there's new album out, you know, so we have to promote that one the most, you know, and the previous one. And I would say that uh, Pandemonic Incantations and Satanica, the last albums, are like the most representative for uh, Bay Mod now. So, uh, well, uh, that's basically this. I just was wondering because you have uh, already uh, also played some of the very old stuff. Yeah. Well, that was one song from the first album, you know, but it's like we are used to play this one since uh, like 96 or something because it really works on stage, you know. People know that song, you know, it like fucking kicks ass and that's that's why I like doing this all the time to play from the Pagan Westlands and people do enjoy this and we can see this and uh, that's probably an exception that we do. You also did a Mayhem cover tonight, Carnage, when I'm right. Uh, I heard this the first time from you. Um, is it already recorded somewhere on any um, compilation? And I think your version is speeded up a, a bit, is that right? A bit. <laughs> yeah, just totally like blast recording, you know, blasting recording, you know. And, uh, well, it just it just had to, to be done in like in behemothish way, you know. Not like covering Mayhem in each fucking detail that they did, no. Just doing this, uh, like it's our interpretation of the uh, song, and I think it's it sounds good. You know, I should listen to the final version, the studio version. It's gonna appear on a, a tribute to Mayhem album that's gonna be out pretty soon. You know, and uh, on avant-garde music from Italy, there's gonna be like uh, the, all the top black metal bands, uh, like Emperor and uh, Marduk and Dark Funeral and so on. So just check it out. Okay, next question. Um, as far as, uh, as I have noticed, the recording lineup for Satanica split after the recording. And uh, I was wondering who was on stage today. It was the same drummer when I'm right, of, of the nation, and uh, who, uh, who did the bass guitar? Okay, so actually we're missing our second guitarist who's gonna join us in three days in Vienna. So the first like seven shows we played in Germany, like in trio. So the lineup was uh, stripped down. And um, so the sound was pretty poor tonight, but in Vienna he's gonna join us and then we're gonna be a like four piece band. And there's a new guitarist, as I told you, you know, uh, he like joined uh, the band half a year ago. His name is Havok. And uh, the bassist, he's a session member from Death Villain. it's a death metal band from Poland. And Inferno is uh, yeah, playing drums as usual so and me on uh, vocals and guitars so that's basically this one thing that is uh, guiding behemoth uh, through the history is uh, the uh, change of record labels you have been on plenty um, perhaps you can uh, comment these labels let's start uh, with pagan records it was pretty like smart to sign them because we I like released uh, one demo tape and they like, got interested in Behemoth and uh, offered us a deal and it, it was a chance for us because at that time there weren't that many black and gold bands emerging, you know, and they were like um, among very few bands that uh, played at the time, like we started the band in 91, uh, so like almost the same like Satyric and Emperor and all the bands, so and then we signed them and yeah i think it worked out for that time you know but we really developed pretty fast you know so we like we were ser we were searching for something like bigger or th th something that could give us some like uh, wider perspectives prospects for the future and we did we signed uh, solicitation from germany but uh, the guy fucked up totally you know he ripped us off and uh, that's the point you know here uh, we 
he ripped us off uh, just didn't pay for uh, royalties and stuff like that you know and it, uh, it's pretty like yeah we should have done much better with pandemonic Inquisitions, for instance you know but there was no promotion for that album at all you know we went on one poor tour which was totally unsuccessful you know and was really you know, you know today with avant-garde we are doing like we have to do a double job because we didn't play that often in Europe, you know. So when we signed, uh, when we signed to, to Avantgarde, uh, we didn't have any record, you know, on their label. But they sent us on tour with these sides back then. And now we're on tour with Satyricon, so we, everything is going fine. You know. Avantgarde is definitely the best label we've worked so far, you know. A really professional label, you know, that believes in the band, you know. They're true metal lovers, and that's really important, not just businessmen. Of course, they are good businessmen. But they're also metal lovers, they support the band, they enjoy our music, they are really like uh, f supporting us a lot, and yeah, that's it. Um, before you uh, went to Solisticium, you have been on Netschool's Eerie Productions and also got uh, got some stuff licensed to um, Wild Wreck, Re yeah? It was just a license deal, so... We like didn't have a direct deal with Nasgus area, you know. We just bought rights to release this demo tape from the Pagan Vanslands in Europe, you know, CD format. So that was basically the idea. But we didn't have a direct deal with him, the guy. No. I had a phone call with Carsten of Solisticium about I think a year ago, or it was short after the release of Pandemonic Incantations, and he told me that uh, Behemoth. Uh, wasn't the band that um, sold that much records for them and they uh, uh, he's, he told me that he uh, would put his priority on bands like uh, Forbidden Side and they would uh, sell lots of more records than you is that really true? I can't believe it uh, you can see this now, you know, where is Forbidden Side and where are all these crappy bands from Solisticium now and where is Behemoth now? that's the answer, you know we are on tour, you know, we sell pretty much, you know we sell something like 15,000 so far of the new album, which is really good, you know, as for us, you know. The reason why he did it, yeah, probably, that's probably true, you know, that he didn't sell that many records. But what can you expect when you don't put any money in promotion? We didn't have any adverts, you know. He thought that he could sell a name, but that's not true, you know. He always, like, gave me an example. Hey, look, first album from Cradle Field, they didn't have... Well, any promotion and they sold so much yeah but we, first of all we are not creative field and we are behemoth and we need promotion in the press interviews and everything for pandemonic incantations he arranged three interviews and he didn't pay any adverts in the press so that's the reason why he didn't sell that much but uh, all in all we i sold the rights uh, for pandemonic incantations to a polish label called metal mind productions we put some bonus songs we are selling this now and we sold um, like twice as much as Solisticium did at that time, now. So we also released a picture disc of that album, so finally it went quite well, I would say. It was not great, you know, but it was okay. I think that this album deserved really mm, a lot, and it got really great critics from the crowd and from and from the press, but um, unfortunately we dealt with unprofessional label. Uh, which uh, Solisticium was, you know, but um, as you can see, this label like doesn't improve at all. It, it just stands in the same place as it was, you know. With Behemoth, they had some like potential, but now there is no potential, you know. Bands like Forbidden Sight, like there are thousands of bands like that, you know. So I, I don't really believe it works, you know. There are many labels like this label, so I think he lost his chance, you know. But I don't give a fuck anymore for him, so. Just don't. As far as I know, uh, Solisticium doesn't exist anymore, and uh, now he calls his stuff uh, Millennium Music or something like that. He perhaps he tried to uh, call it that way, and I, I've never heard again of him. So, okay, okay. Our program is called What's Metal? What is metal for you? I wouldn't say it's my lifestyle or something. You know, it's just a way of expression that I like. It's the only way I can express myself. Uh, some some certain feelings, some certain emotions, you know. But I wouldn't say that I'm like strictly limited to metal or something, you know. I listen to several kinds of music. And metal is just one of the way I can express myself. And uh, yeah, that's basically this, you know.
Are you okay, you express um, yourself with black metal. So what is what is the uh, special essence of black metal compared to other metal styles? I don't really bother about you know comparing or something. You know, Behemoth has has his own identity, has his own face. You know, and I focus uh, most of this. You know, it's hard to say. You know, we just try to be sincere, try to be honest, try to be like a good, hard-working, quality band. You know. Yeah, that's, that's for me it's like basic idea of everything to be sincere, to be real in what we do, you know, and not to fool anybody, just to be totally devoted to this. And we are, and that's the idea. Uh, do you think that uh, bands from Eastern Europe uh, have to try harder to get the same respect like bands from Western Europe? Definitely. I used to, I was, you know, like saying that uh, if we were from uh, Norway, for instance, you know, well, like. You'd be at the top definitely now. So, like, together with Emperor, Satyricon, Immortal, and all the others, you know, would get the same like response. Because our music is a uh, is a quality music. So that's 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 the only thing, you know. It seems like more and more people, you know, focus on like uh, where the band comes from and not what music it makes, and that's the biggest problem. So. But we, yeah, sometimes we, like, we fool some guys, you know, by saying that, I mean, I never claim that we are from Scandinavia or something, but I've seen some um, reviews in, like, English press when we played with this site, uh, that there was, uh, there was stated that there is some new band from Sweden called Behemoth and they are good and stuff like that, so it's kind of funny, you know. I'm not sure if, we, if they, like, they would write the same if we were from if they knew that we were from like Poland or something. It it really doesn't really matter that we are from Poland or something. You know, we are a European band, first of all, you know, we are for Europeans, so I never like uh underline this that we are from Poland, we we have Polish roots. Of course. We used to do this, you know, in the past, you know, this pagan regions and Hitanism and stuff. But we are like get rid of this, you know. We have just different aim, different angle today. And that's it. Um, in the cover inlay of Bewitching the Pomerania, there is a band photo. And uh, to your feet there lies a girl with a naked breast. Who is she? Uh, she is to be uh, like a pretty close uh, partner of myself. So, But uh, yeah, we are not together anymore since uh, some years. So. So I don't really bother, you know, but yeah, I thought, I have to say that uh, this Bewitching from Irania was like a really crappy release, you know, really bad cover, bad photo and uh, not good music, so just forget this, you know. <laughs> um, how is the situation about uh, getting a proper recording studio in Poland? I know that Vader always have a good sound on their recordings and uh, I also have to say that your old releases have a really crappy sound. This improved now. Where have you recorded this time? Have you heard a new album? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it was just uh, a local studio, you know. But it was actually it's pretty good, you know. Sounds like a 64 tracks, you know, analog and digital. And uh, well, what can I say? It's really good one, you know. We, it, it took us like three weeks to record this. And we got really great budget from the uh, avant-garde, you know. Probably the point is that uh, finally we got a proper budget from the label, you know. Solicitum didn't give us that much money, you know. They were like, didn't, he, he like never believed in the band, so that's probably the reason why Behemoth was <laughs> had always like uh, not that good sound, you know. But since Pandemonic Incantations was like becoming a professional band, so uh, now it's really, really good, I believe. Yes, I I would agree that Pandemonic Incantations was was That's the turn. Like yes. And now it's like like a mile step forward now with Satanica, and you can believe me that the new album will sound much better than Satanica. So uh, it seems like we are really getting big now. I mean, with everything, with each detail, with each aspect of our like activity. I think what uh, really made an impression of, uh, for me was the drum sound on the new recording and um, I talked to a death metal drummer a few days ago and uh, he told me that the drum sound all these uh, yeah, it's it sounds exactly the same each time is your drummer that precise or have you done any tricks in the studio I mean it's not really a trick you know we just put some compression so it's like 
it, it like uh, it has the same level if you know what I mean the toms the toms have no compression if you know what I mean yeah. you know if it's what's compression yeah. like it's the same level of sound like triggered, yeah. yeah no it's not trigger well we use first of all we use D drums yeah. for that album which means that we it's like uh, it's not a usual it's, it's not like, like acoustic uh, drums but it's uh, almost the same because um, well it's hard to explain you know the point is that it really sounds good you know and that's the reason for us why we use this you know because in in our music where which you know like several things things comes at the same time you know each hit everything has to be listenable you you have to like it it, it has to be clear you know and using d drums provide this uh, well, what can I say? Uh, this uh, D-drum effect is exactly the same like Morbid Angel used uh, on their last album, Formulas Fatal to the Flesh. So it speaks for itself, you know. It's really good and modern stuff. So uh, what can I say? He's good, you know. You saw him live today, so you can just uh, judge by yourself. No? Are you hardly heard the snare and the tom? So it was difficult. It is the role of like supporting band, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think uh, he's really, really good, you know. Okay, once back to uh, Pandemonic Incantations. Um, the promo version of that CD had a different cover than uh, the final version that got sold. What's the reason for that? The point is that uh, it wasn't uh, um, like ready back then when we needed uh, promo copies, so we just put this uh, like Necronomicon motif on the cover and okay and in uh, a blaze magazine you told about uh, the last song of pandemonic incantations is uh, assassination of Wojciech, um that you haven't done uh, the lyrics for the booklet of that cd because you fear some restrictions uh, from the catholic church in poland so what exactly uh, did you fear there what did i say in the lyrics you mean what did i say i read in that interview in a blaze magazine that um, you haven't printed the the lyrics because you feared that the Catholic Church would uh, do something like uh, a sort of repression against the behemoth. Yeah, you know, it's uh, these days it's pretty like dangerous to state that we're gonna slay John Paul II, and it was stated in that lyrics, you know. So I just felt that it's not that smart move to put the lyrics because probably there are some assholes you know that would like to get us just try to I don't know do something with this something against us I just wanted to avoid this situation so but this song the song itself was pretty much like kind of manifest or something against uh, like this Catholic uh, church in Poland you know no, it's useless, you know, it's useless to speak of the same topics all the time, you know. I'm bored with this anti-Christian bullshit, you know, all the time. It's like, it's, um, yeah, it's sure that we are anti-Christians, you know, but why should we, like, repeat the same shit all the time? We are anti-God, we are anti-Jesus and blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's like, it's a fact, you know, so we, now we are, like, focusing on ourselves, you know. On something that just provides us like um, development or something of ourselves not the shit around you know I don't really care about Christians at all now I mean I just focus on art you know on music on black metal on studying on uh, like um, improving myself all the time physically and mentally and that's it you know that's a point for me so also on uh, pandemonic incantations there was a hidden track number 66, which was nothing else than the intro, uh, recorded backwards, I think. Um, what was the reason for that? Is it just a joke or...? Oh, we never do a joke, you know, but it's kind of like a trick or something, you know, we just... You know, we just... <laughs> just to make... Just to make up people's minds, you know, just to... Just to make make them like think of this, you know. Hey, what what was the goal for this, you know? That was our goal. <laughs> no special meaning behind this, you know. But it made some like <laughs> I wouldn't say troubles, but but lots of people like 
don't know what's going on with this, you know. And it, and you have had, had listened to the new album. And there's also one another, 33rd. So, the same. There's actually, actually the last song is called Zoski Akultus. Nobody knows it. It's called Zoski Akultus. It has lyrics. There is a lyrics for this, you know. But the idea just like was found in the studio. Just thought it would be nice to like do a riff, you know, and do this, you know. But we never meant like uh, recording this uh, as a regular song. So we just edit as a, an extra uh, outro or something. I have lost sight about uh, all these different versions of Satanica now. So, um, what is the the standard version and what is the extended version? What tracks are included? Okay, so standard version is uh, from avant-garde music. It's a European version, uh, which includes like I don't remember eight or nine songs. And the next, uh, I mean, this uh, special edition. The first edition was uh, there was a bonus CD edit with some extra live songs from last tour with this side. It's not a real life recording, you know, we just did it an experiment, you know, but it sounds okay. And uh, we just felt it, like, it's a good idea to like pay a tribute to French fans, which were like excellent at our shows, really enjoy playing in France. Then, so we just put this uh, like five songs or something on CD, and at the same price we sold this, you know, so it's kind of like special thing for people. I mean, uh, it's not so professionally recorded, you know. We just recorded through PA on a cassette, you know. And we just uh, uh, did a mastering of this, so it's not like, like, you know, uh, you can buy uh, live albums from different bands, you know. It's not that thing, you know. But uh, the, 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 if you've heard it, uh, you can um, you can basically hear each instrument, you know. But it's really spontaneous, you know. It's not that good, great uh, quality, but it's pretty spontaneous. It's very real, you know. And then is the second version, yeah. Then the third version is a Polish uh, version uh, without one song. That's because uh, in case anybody from the West would be interested in buying Polish version, we had to like strip it down, you know. Yeah, because it's like a concurrency. We, we couldn't do this, you know. It's like Alnagar told us not to like to to do this in that way, so we did. And there is another version, it's a fourth version, including a Polish edition, including a video th track. There's a video song, you know. It, it, it's a digipack with video track on this, you know, so. It's four versions. For the first song, yeah, we did a video clip and it's pretty cool. And yeah, and there's a picture disc coming tomorrow. So, it's a fifth version, I would say. And probably we'll do also a regular gauge fold uh, LP version. So, <laughs> I mean, I like this, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty messy, you know, people just uh, like, um, yeah, don't know what's going on sometimes, you know, but I like this, you know, myself. I like to collect all these versions. The new album is called Satanica. Originally, it was entitled Us Satanica, is that right? What caused that name change? Shorter and easier to remember. <laughs> yeah. um, and it hits much harder, you know. Our satanic is like a softer, you know. A satanic are just hits. That's the point. Uh, on your homepage, I found um, some info to the uh, to the songs, to the new songs. And um, decade of Sirion is about uh, Operation Six Six Six. It's mentioned there. Um, Perhaps you can explain what Operation 666 has been. Actually not. Uh, if you read the booklet uh, of the new album, I'm not the author of the lyrics. Okay, so I'm, I was not the author of the lyrics, so that's the point, you know. I just wrote one lyric for the album. It's like kind of new thing for Behemoth. And there's a guy, it's like my long-time friend, you know. His name is Christopher. And it's pretty much... In, involved in the occult world, you know, and L.C. Crawl and stuff like this, you know. And he kind of poisoned me with that ideas, you know, and I just found it would be like, great, you know. It fits the behemoth, you know. It's a new face of this band. And probably, yeah, it's pretty much personal, you know. So, it's really hard for me to explain this, but, yeah. What do you think 
has changed uh, mainly since black metal got that popular besides your bands you are, you all already uh, told that you have changed very much but uh, the scene in general well the scene is like the black metal scene is going down definitely um, more and more crappy bands each day you know i just can't stand this you know i hardly listen to any black metal bands these days you know because they are so boring with all these crappy makeups on their faces you know it's just bullshit you know so there are really very few black metal bands that left, you know, like Behemoth definitely. Oh, lots of people claim that we're getting more death metal-ish, but I don't give a fuck, you know, it's black metal for me. It's Tericon and Marduk and Dark Funeral and um, Emperor, which is still black metal, so... And uh, there are smaller bands, you know, but uh, I mean... In most cases, they don't break anything fresh into the music, you know, that's the problem, you know. So, today I listen to more like death metal and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I don't really care about black metal scene anymore, you know. I'm not uh, a kind of black metal person or something, you know. I just, I play black metal, but like, I look differently, I like behave, I think in a different way. I don't wear spikes, never, I never use corpse paint, you know, like. <laughs> So, <laughs> what do you mean? What effects? Yeah, today we also used corpse paint, but it's a different. It's a different way, you know. It's not like, a, it's not the typical corpse paint like many bands use, you know. It's much more expression in this, you know. It's much more like real, and we don't really bother about like looking the same as others, you know. These days, we look, but we look in a diff differently, just you know. I mean, what, what I meant, you know, is that uh, I'm not a typical black metal person, you know. I'm just too individualistic to be a part of something. I play black metal, yes, but I'm also interested in like 10 other things, you know. But, uh, uh, you do not waste your time with uh, endless dis discussions about uh, bands being true or untrue or trendy and stuff like that. I, ne I never do this, you know, I don't give a fuck. If somebody just starts such a conversation, always, my answer is always the same, fuck off. I'm, yeah, okay, I discuss a lot but about music, you know, but uh, about quality music first of all, you know, the quality, the sincerity, the realness, and uh, things like that, you know. What about true and untrue, you know? That's bullshit, you know? Because we ne we'll never find out who's true and who is not. That's bullshit, you know? We just have to, like, listen to the music. Because the music speaks for the composers. You know what I mean? If the music is crappy, then I don't like... Mm, like, that I just don't want to like, discuss about the band, you know? So, music is everything. Okay, Behemoth uh, always has been a band that had uh, hard line-up troubles. Um, do you think that it is difficult to work with you? Uh, how would you characterize yourself? Perhaps the other uh, band members have problems with you regarding their full dedication to Behemoth and uh, who is who's doing all the decisions for Behemoth. I think it's you. It's, uh, I mean, I think it's... Uh, we have an ultimate line-up right now, you know? You should have seen us with a fourth member, you know, we're like, we're a killing machine now, you know, with the new lineup, and we're going really well now, so it's hard to foretell, you know, because you never know what happens, right? People like, people are people, and uh, they react in different ways. Sometimes it's really hard to, like, predict, to, to foretell what, what's gonna, like, what the future brings, so it's really, yeah, I'd love to say that it's a great lineup and like, and like, I would like it to stay like for eternity, but it's never like this, you know. But I'm pretty satisfied from the new lineup. I think it's the best one so far. So if there are no like, um, no great expectations from their side, then we're gonna manage to like work together for a couple of years more, and I hope so. Uh, beside Behemoth, you are uh, studying at the university, is that right? I do several things in life, so... Uh, studying is like, at the university is well, one of the things I do, so... Yeah, I do. It's history. It's the fourth year now, and uh, yeah, there's one more left. And uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, to do this, you know, but... I mean, there are several things that I'm, like, 
into um, on your homepage I uh, saw the, your guest book or um, it's called Behemoth hate mail or stuff like that and yes <laughs> I uh, a lot of that is written in Polish several entries and uh, start with Sieg Heil and uh, and with Heil Adolf Hitler and stuff like that. Do you have uh, heavy trouble with uh, Nazi extremists in the black metal scene in Poland? I was never a part, you know, of this uh, like you know, black metal society, so I don't know, you know. It's just kind of like a great fun for me, to be honest. I used to ignore all that shit, you know, but I just made this for fun, this hate mail, you know, because it's really funny to read this, you know. I was never, like, seriously into like treating treating this you know it's like nothing for me but it's funny to read this you know you know the most funny thing is the one letter i remember there's one letter starting like zikar and hail adolf hitler and you all like catholic assholes and stuff like that and the, the next one says you fucking fascists so that's It speaks for itself you know i don't need to say anything else you know because it speaks of its uh, authors That's it. It's just great fun you know, for me to read this. It's bullshit. But there seems to be a certain form of envy in the scene. Is that right? It's um, uh, uh, quite uh, a few years ago. There was uh, a list circulating, the list of the enemies of black metal, uh, stuff like that. You have been included there. Yeah, I want to be the first one on this list. It's bullshit, of course. You know, probably people like are jealous because we are, like. Like good musicians, I don't know, we sell records, we have a record deal, like doing fine. And just people like can't send this probably, I don't know. I never like I never think of this, you know. That's a problem, probably for some, not for me, you know. But I don't think of this. I ignore things. Because I focus on myself. I'm pretty egocentric and uh, egoistic, you know. But that's the only way to like survive, you know, to go through this shit, you know. You have to focus on yourself, you know. On the closest people that, that are, or your friends and your family, and that's the only point, you know, not to trust anyone, just to, yeah, just to follow your own way, and I always ignored all that like bullshit around. That's the reason why we are like getting, like bigger and higher each day, you know. It's not like that. It takes us some years, you know, but it's getting really better, and that's satisfactory for me, you know. Uh, to close this chapter with the last question, um, you have been in contact with Hendrik Möbius of Absurd from Germany in uh, the early days. Um, he caused a lot of trouble here in Germany and I think you know about it. Um, what was the relationship to him? And um, You seem to be uh, good friends, so as, as far as I um, could see that in uh, your thanks list. I mean, We pretty much like have different views and stuff like that, you know, but um, to be honest, I have some friends that are Catholics, you know, and that makes no troubles, you know, no problems between us, you know, and Henrik Mebius was pretty much extreme, you know, in some ways, and I didn't really like agree with him at some point, you know, but that was not the point to like break the, con the contact or something, you know, because he's really like intelligent and smart person, you know. He did some shit, you know, and now he pays for this, you know. But uh, it doesn't mean that he's like stupid or something, you know. He's pretty like clever, clever, you know. He he's got lots of knowledge about mythology, occult, and uh, history and stuff like that, you know. And that's only the that, that's one of the reasons why I have so like why I have so much respect for that guy, you know. That's the only thing, you know. And uh, well, I didn't hear from him like. A couple of years, I don't remember, you know, no, but yeah, that's all. That's everything that I can say. You know. Yeah. So, um, what about summer open airs? Have you planned anything for that, or have you heard anything of it? Well, I hope so. You know, we're gonna do something. You know, um, uh, I'd like to play like Wagner or Dynamo one day. You know, I hope we we we'll, we'll manage to do this. If not this summer, maybe next one. You know. We, you know, so far we have some serious plans to do some shows, you know, in two or three months, you know, in Portugal, in France and Spain. And then probably in June we are flying over to America to Milwaukee Festival. We've been told so, so I'm pretty much concentrated on this now. And if there's any chance, we'll definitely play on one of these uh, summer festivals. If there's any chance, we'll do this definitely, you know, because we're into playing live, you know. 
it just gives so gives so much like energy for us you know and life vital power you know i love to do live shows you know perform on stage especially when i see when the crowd is like dedicated to music that's like perfect for me so okay any closing comments for your fans yeah what can i say uh, lots of things but uh the most important is like I'd like to thank all the Germans, you know, for the support so far, you know. It's been pretty great, you know. And uh, probably the uh, gigs in Germany are not like the best, you know. It used to be better in the past, you know. But people seem to be like uh, spoiled a bit, you know. Too many gigs, I don't know why, but uh, like less and less people visiting shows. And uh, they're not uh, reacting in that way I would like, like them to do. But still, uh, I think that German is a great market, you know, for us, you know, and Germans still like uh, understand what 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 what's metal about. So I'd like to thank them and to all the individuals I'm in touch in German, like a place like Peter Schramm and all the other guys, you know. So just say hello to them and uh, and just yeah, see ya soon.